COSI. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about Tutankhamun, his tomb and his treasure. And you can't think about Tut without thinking about, like, mummies, right? Course, yeah. And so you've come up with a, a bit of a project here. A project is one way to put it. <laughs> Joe Wood. It's the kind of project that if you tell your friends about, they, they might have questions about you. <laughs> but yes. It does illustrate a really cool principle, yeah. which is how mummies were created. Now, among the many amazing things about Tutankhamun's tomb, um, all the objects that we have, we don't have those objects from other tombs of other pharaohs. Right. But, of course, one of the other important things is Tutankhamun himself, his mummy. And we can actually do DNA analysis to try to tease out some of those familial relationships. Wow some of the um, pharaohs that immediately preceded him yeah. are kind of mysterious and uh, having Tutu in common, you know, we continue to learn things a hundred years later after discovering his tomb. That's really cool that you can use his DNA and really yeah. kind of trace back yeah. and, and connect some dots. So how were mummies made though? Yes, how were mummies made and so what I've is in the box? Been waiting for me to reveal this here. <laughs> So what mummification was, was essentially recreating a natural process. All right. So uh, going back to pre-dynastic times before the pharaohs, mm -hmm. people would bury their dead in the desert sand. Uh, the dry sand would remove the moisture from the body and create a natural mummy. Now when you start putting people into stone coffins and tombs, that no longer happens naturally. But um, there are these dry lake beds which contain a substance called natron. Natron okay. is a collection of uh, different minerals including carbonate, um, sodium bicarbonate like baking soda yeah. and like sodium chloride like table salt uh -huh. but it's very good at removing moisture from things like human bodies. So is that what you have in we the box? We do not have a human body but we have something that is a meat product that is mostly uh, water and protein like a human. Please tell us quickly what you're holding in your hand. This is a hot dog. <laughs> it's a hot dog. But this hot dog hot is completely dog. mummified. Yes, it is. So the moisture has been removed <laughs> from, and again, a hot dog, I know it's kind of gross, but you can also do an apple if you want to do this at home. This hot dog mummy has been here for about two weeks. <laughs> the process <laughs> of removing the moisture yeah. is very fascinating to yeah. watch. So this so is a good weeks. activity to do over the course of a week with um, an apple and with a hot dog. So you can have the, you know, unmummified yeah. hot dog to compare, and each day you kind of open up your container and see how much moisture is removed and how the texture has changed. Do you use all beef, Frank, or is that just whatever you got on hand? I think, you know, if I'm eating them, <laughs> I think I go for an all beef, Frank. Okay. If I'm gonna cool. mummify it, cool. I think it would just go whatever you have available. Yeah, look, you're a diamond dog, you take one home, yeah. Yeah, there you go. But again, like the difference, a hot dog and a human are not yeah. that dissimilar, yeah. and the same kind of moisture content. Sure. A lot of protein. <laughs> a hot, it's hard to keep a straight face. A hot dog and a human are not that different. But I will say that uh, the actual mummification process took a, took a little bit longer than a week. Okay. Uh, they had 70 days wow. to uh, mummify the pharaoh and place him uh, or her within their tomb. Um, in order for them to pass to the afterlife. I learn something new every time I come to Kosai, <laughs> and you can too. Uh, so stop on by and check out uh, Tut while it's here. Thanks, yep. Joe. <laughs>